So, uh, the journey continues. Let me take out the next stack of bands here. Uh, as I said, these are a lot of records, so I try to be quick. Um, yeah, um, yeah, now this band, uh, very important uh, British jazz funk band, Lynx. Uh, this is an amazing mixture of uh, soul, funk, pop. Uh, the music also had this kind of a post-punk uh, rock vibe probably coming from the police maybe. Uh, that might have been some influence here. Particularly if you take a song like I Won't Forget, uh, which really sounds like a police song to me. So this is their 1981 album Intuition. Some really great songs here. Uh, Particularly the opener, Wonder What You're Doing Now. Uh, also uh, the song Throw Away the Key is a pretty good pop song that kind of... I mean this could be a song from the Alan Parsons project actually, the way it sounds. So this is a very classic uh, 80s pop album. And a great example of uh, British uh, jazz funk. Um, also You Are Lying. You Are Lying is certainly a... Real zinger here. So same year saw the arrival of their album Go Ahead. Um, again, um, some really great tracks here. Um, particularly, um, so this is Romance, this is a very nice tune and Urban Refugee is a very good song. Um, yeah, overall Go Ahead is slightly uh, cheesier than the predecessor. Still a pretty good record. Now the next band has become very famous. But before becoming huge superstars with major hits, Level 42 was a pretty cool jazz act, very funky. Now if you don't know this uh, debut album by Level 42, you should check it out. Very brilliant. I mean, just check out a track like uh, Turn It On or Almost There or Love Games. This is very cool music. Mark King's bass playing is always outstanding, but no one would expect anything less. Yeah, um, the next band I wanted to show you is the Shakadak. Um, they again put out two um, albums in the year 1982. One of them is Nightbirds. This is a great mixture of funk and disco, but a rather gentle music. Uh, but you can totally hear how this must have been very influential, not only on genres like the Japanese city pop, but uh, also on the late 90s deep house and Latin house and uh, disco house scene. It's probably a very underrated album, I think. Amazing, amazingly tight band. Uh, just check out a song like Nightbirds or Streetwalking. Um, so those are really amazing musicians. It's a pretty good record. Now, as I said, they did two albums in that year. The other one was Invitations. Now I do understand why for some people Shakatak is too much of a kind of a elevator music band, um, a little too close to the cheese. Yeah, but you have to respect the musicianship. There are really some great playing here. Uh, just uh, just listen to the piano solos. I mean, some of them are really incredible. Um, just a track like "Lose Myself" has this amazing guitar solo. So um, pretty cool band and uh, really tight tight, funky, soulful sound. Now this is 1980's Round Trip by Light of the World. This album was probably a, pretty much a game changer. This is a very funky outfit and uh, certainly with a lot of American influences here by bands like maybe Sly and the Family Stone or Chamber Brothers, Earth, Wind and Fire, but probably mostly Cool and the Gang. I mean, the band's name is taken from a Cool and the Gang song, so uh, this is quite obvious. I think this album was really influential on the entire uh, British jazz funk scene at the time. And uh, I think when this album came out, not so many bands were doing it. And um, I mean, the bass playing is through the roof here. Um, just check out a track called London Town, the second song on that album. What a great uh, snare beat, totally locked in with the bass. Uh, it's just brilliant. Or the rather soulful I'm so happy. Some great stuff. And check out on the B-side Pete's Crusade. It's quite amazing. And uh, Painted Lady. One of my favorite songs on this album. With this wonderful harmony singing. Yeah, Light of the World. Round Trip from 1980. Really brilliant album. 
And uh, yeah, a spin-off band from Light of the World was uh, Bagger and Co. Now this came out in 1981, uh, called The Monument. Now this is very jazzy and very funky and certainly uh, one of the most seminal projects of uh, this whole musical era. Um, just check out a track like uh, Break It Up and their track Mule Chant Number 2. Very cool stuff. Bagger and Co. And that leads us uh, to another spin-off band from Light of the World, which was Incognito. Now this is the coolest Brit funk band you can imagine. Paul Tubbs Williams on the bass is really killing it here. And um, the whole percussive bass playing was something that was quite typical for this band. And uh, there are fierce sax solos and uh, very psychedelic keyboard solos. The music is really trippy, but it has, has this incredible disco vibe to it. So, um, pretty cool album. Um, so many songs I could recommend from here. Certainly the opener, Shine On, with this insane bass playing, but also um, Wake Up The City, Incognito. There is this magnificent jazz song called Chase The Clouds Away. But I kind of find every track here pretty outstanding. This is a really good record. So, Incognito, Jazz Funk. This was from 1981. Now the next band is Imagination and their album Body Talk from 1981. This was an essential post-disco outfit from Britain. Famous for this uh, kind of a slow, soulful music with a very electronic, almost minimalistic uh, instrumentation. So there are some great tracks here like the opener Body Talk but also So Good So Right. Now So Good So Right was uh, used by Dimitri from Paris again for his uh, other compilation called After the Playboy Mansion. I have this one on CD here. Um, pretty cool track. Um, Another cool track is Tell Me Do You Want My Love, um, which is a very good example of this rather minimalistic uh, percussion sound they had that became so such a signature uh, of their band and um, it becomes obvious why this band was such a strong influence on uh, sort of the, the DJ disco house music of the 90s. Um, so there's some really cool stuff here and some very, very weird fashion choices going on in this band. Yeah, the next one is certainly one of my favorite from this period. I'm talking about Southern Freeze by Freeze. This is a wonderful album. Great mixture of Latin and jazz in parts with a very furious uh, bass guitar by Peter Maas. Um, this is a Wonderful record and wonderful example of this musical style and era. As far as recommendations go, check out a track called Sunset on the A-side or obviously their biggest hit, uh, Southern Freeze, uh, which has this completely honest and unpretentious vocals. Uh, quite wonderful, quite wonderful. Um, or there's this rather dark track called Roller Chase, which is quite surprising. Uh, so. Uh, Check this one out, this is a very good album. Another band that technically does not belong in that stack and yet uh, was kind of part of the same musical environment was uh, ABC. Here with their debut album Lexicon of Love from 1982, produced by Trevor Horn. This is a fascinating seminal pop album and uh, certainly one of the most important records of that year. And um, yeah, it's technically not a jazz funk album, but just listen to Mark Lickley's bass playing on uh, Poison Arrow and you will know exactly what I mean. So there are some really funky grooves going on here. And that's why I've included it here. Just check out the rhythm section on uh, Many Happy Returns, for example, and uh, you'll understand 